the 1960s were a pivotal decade for Formula 1 racing, as it marked a transition period from the front-engine cars of the past to the more aerodynamic and rear-engine machines of the future. The era was characterized by a fierce competitive spirit, technological advancements and some of the most exciting and dangerous races in motorsport history. During this time, car manufacturers and engine builders were experimenting with new technologies and designs, resulting in some of the most innovative and beautiful machines ever seen on track. The engines ranged from small displacement V8s to massive V12 cylinder units, producing anywhere from 200 to over 400 horsepower. The cars themselves were also lighter, sleeker and more agile, with a greater emphasis on aerodynamics and downforce compared to the cars that came before them. But one team built something crazy. Well, let me rephrase that. All of the engines used back then was pretty cool in their own right. But trust me, this thing is next level. You see, British Racing Motors built and raced one of the most unique and complicated engines in the history of motorsports, the H16. While most race engines of the time used conventional layouts like the V8 or V12, BRM's engineers went above and beyond creating an engine with an H16 layout. The idea for the H16 engine was born in the mid-1960s when BRM was working on a new engine for the 1966 racing season. The new regulations for that year allowed for a larger displacement of naturally aspirated engines and BRM needed a new engine to compete. The company had two designs in mind, a conventional V12 and the experimental H16. Now despite the more complicated design of the H16, BRM eventually chose this layout. Now what exactly does this new layout entail? Well the H16 engine was essentially two flat 8 engines stacked on top of each other, sharing a common crankshaft. Each bank of cylinders had its own set of dual overhead camshafts, four valves per cylinder and separate ignition systems. Additionally, each bank had its own radiator, distributor and water pump. With a total of 16 cylinders, the H16 was an incredibly complex and intricate power plant requiring a significant amount of engineering, expertise and technical know-how to design and build. You see, the company already had a 1.5 litre flat A dual overhead cam motor, so they essentially took two of their existing 16 valve 1.5 litre V8s and slapped them together with the help of some super smart engineers and turned it into a 32 valve 3 litre H16. Now this made the H16 an extremely complex engine as you might think with 8 camshafts and 4 ignition systems. BRM's engineer faced significant reliability issues early on but they persevered and delivered a final design for the 1966 season. The engine was powerful enough to compete with the top engines of the time but it was also larger, heavier and thirstier. The H16 equipped cars hit the track in the first race of the 1966 season, but both Yankee Stewart and Graham Hill eventually opted to drive BRM's older V8 races. The H16 debut was postponed until the 7th round and on its debut, all cars fitted with the experimental unit unfortunately retired, failing to finish a single race. BRM returned with an improved version of the H16 engine for the 1967 season and Jackie Stewart scored a second place finish, however, the team faced several retirements due to reliability issues and ended the season in 6th place. BRM eventually phased out the H16 engine after 1967, which is sad, it would be really cool if they could figure it out, but sometimes, as I'm sure you know, simple is better. Now despite its poor performance on track, the H16 engine remains a unique and fascinating creation. The engine's complex layout with its 16 cylinders arranged in a H-shaped configuration show us the innovative spirit of the engineers who worked on it. The H16 sound is also something to behold, with many enthusiasts considering it to be one of the best sounding engines ever built. Just take a listen. Now while the H16 engine was not a success in the world of motorsport, it remains an important part of racing history and an example of the groundbreaking engineering that was possible in the past when the rules were more open. 
The fact that Bjorin was able to create and raise such a unique engine is a testament to the company's willingness to take risks and push the boundaries of what is possible in motorsports. Unfortunately, all of this engineering was kind of for nothing since the engine didn't fare very well in racing, but it is still very cool. But let me know what you think of this engine down below. Um, do you think it's stupid? I think it is cool. Yes, it didn't do well, but it's just cool to see what is possible when there isn't too many rules and stuff involved. If, you're, if you leave engineers to actually just go out and build something really cool. Yes, it didn't win, but it, it, it's just cool. Yeah. But let me know what you think. If you like this video, you like most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel. See if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?